Dante AEDT 4120, Serious Gaming and Simulations. Week 3, Digital Game Based Learning, Video Clip 2 of 3. I'm Professor Bill Kapravos, and over the next few minutes, we're going to discuss the Millennials. However, prior to doing so, here's the list of analysis questions for this particular video clip. Number 1, Who are the Millennials? Number 2, What are some of the challenges that educators face with respect to the Millennials? Number three, according to Mark Prensky, what are the ten ways that millennials are different from other generations? And finally, number four, in contrast to traditional learning environments, what type of learning environments do video games provide? For the millennial generation or the millennial student, as you've discussed in previous courses, the millennials are essentially the generation that have been raised on digital technology and mass media. Or as Mark Prensky likes to point out, the internet generation. Now the Millennials themselves, they're very technologically literate and they see technology as a necessity both in life and in learning. This reliance on digital technology, mass media, and mass information has led to some challenges for educators. Millennials view traditional teaching and learning environments whereby, for example, the educator is in front of the classroom dictating to the students what needs to be learned as boring and these traditional environments don't necessarily address their learning needs. The Millennials have always been digitally connected and this in itself has led to a mindset unlike any that educators have seen in the past. The Millennial students are no longer the students that our educational system was designed to teach. Our students, the Millennials, have changed and this change is certainly not incremental from those of the past, nor is this change simply related to their slang, their clothing style, the music they listen to, etc., as happened in previous generations. There has actually been a big discontinuity, or as Mark Prensky likes to say, a singularity that has taken place. And more specifically, an event has taken place that has changed things so fundamentally that there is no going back. The millennials, they expect learning to be fun and interactive, in contrast to many of the environments they currently encounter. And they prefer learning by doing, or in other words, they prefer trial and error. And this is essentially the same type of learning that occurs within video games. Millennials will obtain knowledge when given the opportunity to rehearse or practice skills. And this is essentially attributed to reinforcement, application, repetition, and practice. According to Mark Prensky, millennials differ in 10 ways from previous generations. Number one, Twitch speed. And by Twitch speed here, Mark refers to the rate that a game player's thumbs move up and down on the controller. Due to games and other experiences, including the use of phones and interactive media and devices, millennials have far more experience at processing information quicker than their predecessors, and they're much better at doing so. Of course, humans have always been able to process information quickly. You can look at certain prof professionals, such as pilots and surgeons. But the ability has now moved into a generation at large, and it's actually taken place at an early age. Now this presents some, some problems for the millennials. Short of video games, very little moves that fast. Traditional school, which to them moves very slowly, feels very boring to them. So we need to create learning experiences that maintain pace and exploit this twitch speed while adding content that is important and useful. And again, this goes back to digital game-based learning. Number two, parallel versus linear processing. Millennials always multitask, and some of this stems from video games and the fact that they play video games. And according to uh, Patricia Greenfield of UCLA, she cites parallel processing as, open quote, a cognitive requirement of skillful video game playing, end quote. So again, this parallel processing inherent in millennials is attributed to the fact that they play video games. Now, of course, parallel processing is nothing new to humans. The human mind can actually process many tracks at once or in very quick succession. And people can learn to do much in parallel depending on certain job situations. So we as educators need to be thinking of additional ways to enhance parallel processing for the millennial students in order to take advantage of this now more highly enhanced human capability. Number three. Random access versus linear thinking. The millennials were the first to experience hypertext and clicking around in their games and on the web, particularly on the web. And doing so, they have developed what's known as, or what Mark Pransky calls, hypertext minds, as though their cognitive structures were parallel, not sequential. 
And this new random information access structure has increased the millennials awareness of and the ability to make connections. It has also freed them from the constraints of a single path of thought. Number four, graphics first versus text first. In previous generations, graphics were illustrations accompanying the text. Currently, the role of text is to clarify what was first experienced as an image. Millennials are continuously exposed to high quality visuals with little or no accompanying text. And this has led to a sharpening of their visual sensitivity. This leads to some challenges. We need to design ways to use this shift in order to enhance comprehension while maintaining the same or even greater richness of information in the new visual context. Number five, connected versus standalone. Millennials have become accustomed to the worldwide connectedness of email, messaging, multiplayer games, etc. And this is both synchronous and asynchronous. So there are others that, are, that, that can be contacted to, spoken to, and played with elsewhere in the world 24-7, 365 days a year. Number six, active versus passive. This is, again, as Mark Prensky calls, the just do it generation. And they have much less tolerance for passive situations, such as lecturing, classrooms, meetings, amongst others. And it has been theorized that this is directly from growing up playing with video games. Games are designed to teach you as you go, and they offer a trial and error type learning. Number seven, payoff versus patience. Important lessons millennials learn from video games. We'll just look at a couple of these here. If you put in the hours and master the game, you will be rewarded. And this reward may be with respect to an advance to the next level, with a win, with a place on the high score list. Games and computers can provide feedback very quickly. And this has led to a huge intolerance on the part of the millennials for things that don't pay off at the level expected. And finally, this implies that we as edu educators need to offer millennials meaningful rewards now, as opposed to advice about how things will pay off in the long run. Number eight, fantasy versus reality. Fantasy elements from both the past, for example, medieval Dungeons and Dragons and the future, so for example, Star Wars, Star Trek, are apparent in their lives. And this is encouraged by games and technology. So rather than forcing the millennials to grow up and get real, and abandon their rich fantasy worlds. We need to search for new ways to combine fantasy and reality to everyone's benefit. Number nine, play versus work. For the millennials, play is essentially work. And of course, this is in fact due to video game play. Achievement, winning, and beating competitors are all very much part of the ethic and process of play. And finally, number 10, technology as friend versus technology as foe. To the non-millennials, technology is something to be feared, tolerated, or at best, harnessed for one's purpose. To the millennials, the computer or technology is essentially a friend. It's where they turn to for play, relaxation, and fun. Now, in addition to the above 10 differences, a defining characteristic of millennials is their attitude. And it's an irreverent, often sarcastic, tell it like it is, don't try to pull the wool over my eyes way of looking at things. And this attitude is captured in many of the games that they play. Here's something to consider. An interesting quote from Marshall McLuhan, a Canadian educator, philosopher, and scholar. And his work is actually viewed as one of the cornerstones of the study of media theory. And he's known for coining expressions such as the medium is the message and the global village. And he predicted the internet almost 30 years before its invention. To quote Marshall McLuhan, Open quote, anyone who makes a distinction between education and entertainment doesn't know the first thing about either one, end quote. What do you think of this? Here's something else to consider. Has the millennial brain physically changed? So according to Mark Prensky, as a result of the ubiquitous digital environments and the sheer volume of their interaction within this environment, open quote, it is very likely that our students' brains have physically changed and are different from ours as a result of how they grew up. We can say with certainty that their thinking patterns have changed, end quote. And something else to consider as well, another quote from Dr. Bruce D. Berry of the Baylor College of Medicine in Texas, United States, open quote, different kinds of experience lead to different brain structures, close quote. Do you agree with these statements? Something else to consider, and this is something for you to think about, when we look at video games and learning. So in contrast to traditional teacher-centered learning environments where the teacher controls and dictates the learning, 
Video games present a learner-centered approach to learning, where the player or the student controls the learning and the teacher or the educator acts as a facilitator. And through interactivity, the player is able to learn via active critical learning. This leads us to further resources. The material presented in this video clip comes from primarily two articles from Mark Prensky, which are available via his website provided here. Finally, something else to consider is the 2011 Horizon Report, which examines emerging technologies for their potential impact on and use in teaching, learning, and creative inquiry. This is available from the EDUCAUSE website and from the link provided here below. This leads us to the end of video clip three and to our synthesis questions. Number one, do you agree or disagree with Marshall McLuhan and more specifically with his quote, anyone who makes a distinction between education and entertainment doesn't know the first thing about either one. Number two, is game-based learning the solution to the millennial education needs? In other words, can all instruction be placed within a game? Explain. And finally, number three, do you believe that the brain of the millennials has physically changed? And this is the end of video clip three. Thank you.